Hi everyone and good Monday evening, it's Eric Wilhelm here with a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the Valley's most in-depth, detailed weather forecast. And this week is going to be a lot different than the last several weeks. In fact, the next few weeks overall will be in stark contrast, I think, to uh, what has been overall a pretty cold and snowy winter so far. Let's get right to the details. And this is a high-res uh, visible satellite uh, snapshot from today. Uh, this is what we call the MODIS satellite. Oftentimes spectacular views from this thing when we have a clear sky in the winter in particular. You can of course easily uh, make out Lake Erie right here with all the ice coverage, some open water on the northern end of the lake. Still some snow on the ground of course uh, in northeast Ohio and western PA, although we lost a lot of our snow cover uh, during that uh, warm spell at the end of the weekend. When we look at the Great Lakes as a whole, a lot of ice coverage and no doubt this is the peak of the season. Absolutely a guarantee that this is as widespread as the uh, as the ice will get on the Great Lakes. You know, obviously almost full coverage on Lake Erie. Quite a bit on Lake Huron as well. Of course, Lake Michigan's very, very deep, as is Lake Ontario, so the, uh, the ice coverage tends to be a little less on those deep Great Lakes. Now back on Lake Erie, uh, it was down a little bit today, but uh, the past couple of days up around 95%. Again, that will be the peak for the season. And of course, way above the seasonal average, which is eh, 55 to 60% or so at this time of the year, typically peaking in about a week. Uh, a little after Valentine's Day is, is the, you know, climatological average peak of the ice cover on Lake Erie. I mentioned that snowpack disappearing, still pretty healthy up here. But in our local area, you know, slushy inch, maybe two at the most in most uh, backyards. That's about it. Uh, it really warmed up significantly over the weekend. We had some rain and that all attributed uh, or contributed, I should say, to the uh, snow melt. Also led to the fog problems that we had during parts of Saturday night and Sunday. All right, we took our lumps uh, forecast wise over the last few days with it getting warmer than we expected. But we finally were back uh, on track today uh, with uh, a high of... Uh, 32 this afternoon, uh, still a little shy of what we actually got to 34. It just wants to, seems like it just wants to overachieve right now, which is why I've uh, been pretty aggressive in my forecast for the next seven days with temperatures. I'm getting tired of being too low uh, temperature wise. Now for uh, 2018 so far, we're at 71% on uh, what we call the two degree guarantee, where we try to get the high temperatures right within two degrees each day. All right, the weather uh, pattern across the lower 48 states, fairly benign this evening. Actually, some much-needed rain. It's not enough of it, but they'll take it. Out in parts of the southwest, including around Vegas, down into the Phoenix area as well. Flagstaff, Arizona, seeing some uh, snow. Uh, Grand Canyon area as well. Some showers down in parts of Florida, but otherwise, yeah, not, not much to... Not much to point out as far as significant weather this evening. Cold remains a story in places where it's been really cold this winter. Now, of course, you expect it to be really cold up here in the winter, but compared to average, it's been a pretty harsh winter in parts of the Dakotas and into Montana. And this evening is no exception with a lot of places well down below zero. Some places near the U.S.-Canadian border this morning started with temperatures in the 20s below zero, even close to 30 below in some spots. All right, our weather pretty benign tonight. Cold will end up around 10, maybe even some single digits in some spots. I think tomorrow's a winter. Cold start, yes, but with a mixed bag of clouds and sunshine, uh, we should see a uh, pretty quick recovery. Uh, this is kind of a warm wind direction for us a lot of times. <coughs> pardon me, uh, out of an easterly direction. The wind, <coughs> pardon me, the wind down slopes off uh, some of the higher terrain east of I-79 in Pennsylvania, so uh, sometimes we'll get some bonus degrees out of that. And I really don't think it clouds up completely until the evening. And then clouds will hang tough into Wednesday. Now, Wednesday is going to be a, a mild day despite the clouds. We'll get up to about 50 Wednesday afternoon. I think the raindrops try to hold off until pretty close to sunset. Pretty good chance for showers then Wednesday night into parts of Thursday morning. But I think we probably get a break Thursday afternoon. And if we get that break and we get some sunny breaks, you know, we're going to see temperatures blast off probably into the upper 50s Thursday afternoon. But look at the big tr uh, change then on Friday. Now, Friday's an interesting day. I'll show you more details on that in just a second. That's really our only one wintry day I can point to. Maybe for the rest of the month, Friday could be it. So that may be the, those may be the last snowflakes we see until March coming up on Friday. And then a nice rebound for the, uh, for the upcoming weekend. So uh, not much in the way of wintry weather over the next several days. Let's talk about that Friday situation. A cold front's going to come through pretty early in the day on Friday. This is the uh, GFS model showing the front uh, right here, moving through right around daybreak. This has uh, all the makings of a uh, windy day with those isobars packed together pretty tightly. Now, we might see a few raindrops early in the day with temperatures still in the middle and upper 30s. But it's likely to be one of those backwards days where temperatures fall during the daylight hours. Probably see a transition over to snow showers and flurries. Really don't think this is going to add up to much 
but that's really the only wintry day we have coming up, so that's why I wanted to spend a minute on it. Weekend looks pretty good. Uh, high pressure builds across, and you'll notice not much going on Saturday. Here's Sunday, pretty benign as well, so uh, should be a pretty quiet weekend for a change. We've had a lot of active weather on weekends uh, this winter, and then our next chance for rain coming our way on Monday. All right, longer range, uh, blowtorch pattern. <laughs> You know, last February, of course, was remarkably warm. It was the warmest February on record last year. This year will not be like that. Of course, we're running deficits because it's been so cold so far. But the second half of February this year, the pattern kind of looks like the second half of February last year, uh, where the, the west, uh, especially the northern Rockies, northern plains are cold, and the eastern U.S., especially centered over the southeastern U.S., is very mild compared to average. And uh, this signature is on the modeling through the end of February and maybe even into the first week to 10 days of March. So winter is going to take a long hiatus. And back here in the short term, now this is just one run of one model. This is the European. I'm just showing this for fun next week to show you what's on the table. I, I wouldn't forecast this just yet, but it's on the table as a possibility that next Wednesday our high temperatures are in the 70s. That's what the European's showing next Wednesday afternoon, nine days from now. How about that? Uh, so that's the kind of pattern we're going to get into, reminiscent of the second half of February last year. Now, again, I wouldn't put 70s in our forecast if I had to do a nine-day forecast, but I can't rule that out either. That's an extreme solution right now, but I wouldn't rule out some pretty, pretty impressive warmth coming our way during the second half of February. We deserve it, you know? It's been a long, cold winter, so I'm looking forward to, even if we hit 60 a few times over the next couple of weeks. I'll take that in a heartbeat. My dog will be very happy as well. Thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you back here tomorrow evening, and uh, we'll be on late uh, due to the Olympics all week this week. So uh, if you're uh, up watching the Olympics to the bitter end each evening, I hope you'll uh, keep the TV tuned to, uh, to uh, WFMJ, and we'll uh, bring you the latest late local news. Have a great night, everyone.